Hi guys, Korean movie recapped here. Warning, spoilers ahead. Today, I'm going to recap a Korean drama film released in 2018, called Wretches. It's a captivating movie about school bullies and the worst these people can do to get what they want. Can their victim fight back? Let's find out together. The movie begins with Sung Woo's uncanny plan to put pesticides in Yong Ju and Yang Hun's drinks. They both are the school bullies. Because of it, Yong Ju is hospitalized, but to his dismay, Yang Hun survives it because he spits the poison drink. Jae Young is a lanky teenager who is friends with Sung Woo. They both get bullied a lot by Yong Ju and its notorious squad in school. The poisoning incident is something Jae Young is aware Sung Woo did, yet he chose not to speak about it because he was the one who jokingly presented the idea to him. At that time, he did not know that Sung Woo takes the joke seriously. That day, a police officer arrived at school to investigate what happened. Meanwhile, Yang Hun orders Jae Young to buy him bread in the middle of the class in three minutes. Knowing what would happen if he resists, Jae Young immediately goes out, but the police officer and the principal catch him off guard. With that in mind, Jae Young reasons that he is going to the toilet. When the police officer and principal let him go, he hides behind a wall as the two approach his classroom to expel Sung Woo for what he did. As Jae Young hides behind the wall, he could not help but feel devastated upon the leave of his only friend at school. He knows it is for the betterment of Sung Woo, but he feels alone, somehow at the same time. Shortly after, Jae Young sprints to the comfort room because he notices the police officer going there. Once in the comfort room, the police officer talks about Sung Woo and his share of empathy against bullies. The police officer has a hunch that Jae Young knows something about the incident but chooses to shut his mouth. Apart from that, the police officer also makes him realize that bullies are not meant to be tolerated. Once Jae Young is back in the classroom, Yang Hun orders him bread in three minutes. Jae Young runs as fast as possible to the canteen without wasting time to buy the bread. Given that the bread has to undergo a microwave to heat up, Jae Young has no choice but to skip the process because three minutes is hard to beat. Luckily, he makes it on time, but the bread comes out cold since three minutes is not enough to microwave it. Mad about the bread, Yang Han spits it out then smacks it on Jae Young. Concurrently a friend of Yong Ju, invites him to visit Yong Ju in the hospital, but Yang Han refuses. He seems to be glad that Yong Ju is not around. He wants to replace him as the number one at the school. Later that night, Jae Young drops by a coffee shop where his crush, Yeri, is working. This sweet girl has a single loving mom who leaves her in the house to go to his sick sister in the hospital. So, she lives alone in the house. One day after school, Yang Hun and Shang Chul stop Jae Young at his after-school course place. They are stalking Bu Kyung, a famous local schoolgirl. Jae Young stares at her for a moment, and to his surprise, the girl looks exactly like Yeri. Yang Hun orders Jae Young to follow the girl and get her address. Unfortunately, Jae Young loses track of the girl and can't find her home because the thought of Yeri, who looks similar to the girl, distracts his mind. Afterward, Jae Young nervously tells Yang Hun about the bad news. But Yang Hun is in a terrible mood because his parents want to disown him. It somehow reflects his attitude since he did not receive much love from his parents. Nevertheless, manipulation and bullying are not acceptable to cope with family problems. Yang Hun and Shang Chul meet with Jae Young behind a PC cafe that night. Together, they threaten to hurt Jae Young with a cigarette burn if he fails to get the girl's address again. Shaking, Jae Young agrees to the plan. In the meantime, Jae Young tries to talk to his mom about his situation. He tells her that he wants to transfer, but his mom does not want to because of financial problems. Thereby, Jae Young has no choice but to accept his miserable life. It feels like he has no one to share his problems with, for his parents don't even listen. When the night falls, Jae Young continues to follow Bu Kyung until he succeeds in getting her address. However, that's not the end of Yang Hun's evil pursuit to get the girl. For Jae Young's second mission, he needs to figure out the door code to her house. As it happens, Jae Young is still overwhelmed that Bu Kyung looks like his crush, Yeri. When he comes by to the cafe where she works, he can't help but feel sorry for himself for doing all the dirty work for the bullies. This time, the absurdity is immensely disgusting that Jae Young does not want to do it anymore. Notwithstanding his perspective, he has no choice but to surrender to Yang Hun because he does not want to get hurt. Consequently, Jae Young tries to deceive Yang Hun and Shang Chul by taking pictures of his apartment's door code instead. 
when he shows the image to Yan Hun and Shang Chul, they disapprove and want a shred of concrete evidence. Simultaneously, they decide to aim for her panty. Later that day, Jae Young attempts to sneak into Bu Kyung's house to rob her panty. Unfortunately, Bu Kyung's parents come home, so Jae Young hides in a room and immediately leaves the house. Once outside, he even encounters Bu Kyung, but he does not care at all, Jae Young just wants to get out of the place. Another day has come, and this is a special day for Jae Young because it's Yeri's birthday. Jae Young spends the day with Yeri, where they go to a bowling center. Once at school, Yang Hun aggressively barges into a toilet cubicle to see Jae Young and his phone full of photographs of Yeri. Thinking it is Bu Kyung, Yang Hun strips Jae Young then writes nasty words on his back without letting him explain everything. The next day, Jae Young shows a side-by-side -side picture of Bu Kyung and Yeri to Yang Hun. This time, Yang Hun finally believes in him. Since he does not want to buy bread for Yang Hun anymore, Jae Young decides to introduce Yeri to him. Later that day, Jae Young buys cake for Yeri to celebrate her birthday again. He plans to make her drunk then introduce her to Yang Hun, but he can't seem to do it. Afterward, he postpones the meetup which makes Yang Hun furious. To compensate, he invites Yang Hun to the cafe where Yeri works so he can see her personally. In this event, Yang Hun formulates a plan wherein Jae Young will pretend it is his birthday to invite him and Shang Chul to Yeri's house. Jae Young is not fully aware of Yang Hun's agenda, but he could not say no. Considering the plan, Jae Young goes to Yeri's house, where she invites him in. After that, Yang Hun and Shang Chul arrive there to drink alcohol. Later on, Yeri enters her room, for she is already drunk and uneasy with these guys around. Shortly after, Yang Hun and Shang Chul force Jae Young out to get the full advantage of Yeri. Shang Chul also goes out to prevent Jae Young from calling the police. As it occurs, this is the moment Jae Young fears to happen. Once Yang Hun and Shang Chul leave Yeri's house, he comes in only to realize she is weeping so hard. It shattered Jae Young to pieces to hear Yeri like that, but he is too weak to do anything but clean the mess in her kitchen and leave her there. In pursuit of what happened, Jae Young tries to hurt Yang Hun, but as expected, it's the other way around because Yang Hun and Shang Chul kick him on the floor instead. Luckily, a teacher stops them, so he survives. Later on, Jae Young visits Yeri at the cafe, where he witnesses the trauma she experiences from the assault Yang Hun did to her. Simultaneously, a co-worker tries to surprise Yeri, but because of the incident, she freaks out easily. It hurts Jae Young to see her like that, so he instantly leaves the place. When the night arrives, Yang Hun and Shang Chul decide to assault Yeri again in her house. But instead of her, it's Yeri's mother who's in there. Seeing the two guys go to her house late that night, Yeri's mother can't help but cry on the floor, knowing her daughter is most probably molested. The next day, the police officer interrogates Jae Young about Yeri's case, but he does not tell the truth. On the other hand, Yang Hun and Shang Chul see the incident and fear that Jae Young will tell the police officer what happened at Yeri's house. Concurrently, the police officer warns Jae Young about revenge and its consequences, but he chooses to ignore it. Since Jae Young did not tell the truth, Yang Hun and Shang Chul plan to consider Jae Young as a friend this time. Jae Young even invites Yang Hun to dinner with his parents to celebrate their friendship. But behind all of that, Jae Young has a plan to take revenge for Yeri and himself. At this point, Yang Hun shows Jae Young a video of him assaulting Yeri on her bed. Jae Young can't even finish the video because he is extremely disturbed by the content. Considering the situation, Jae Young comes over to Sung Woo's new school to tell him about his situation. Talking with an old friend gives him the courage to execute his plan. The following day, while the class is on the field, Jae Young grabs the chance to use Yang Hun's phone and get the video. Fortunately, he sends it on time then deletes the history before one of Yang Hun's friends comes into the room to get his phone. Granted his success, he goes to the hospital to show Yong Ju, who is now recovering from the poison, the video. Yong Ju is also interested in Bu Kyung and is mad that Yang Hun forcefully tasted her behind his back. This shows that Jae Young tries to make Yong Ju believe that the girl in the video was Bu Kyung to make him mad and pit him against Yang Hun. Before anything bad happens to him, Jae Young treats Yeri to date in a park where he buys her a hair clip. He knows that no matter what he does, he can't erase the fact that he is the one who made the assault happen. As he bids her goodbye, tears start flowing from Jae Young's eyes at the sight of Yeri. That night, Jae Young sends the video to the police officer who agrees to meet with him. Later on, when he hangs out with Yang Hun, he deliberately shows him that he has the video. 
Yang Hun panics and is about to beat him. But Yong and his friend come and beat Yang Hun instead. Jae Young watches Yang Hun as he struggles to explain that the girl is not Bu Kyung but someone who looks similar to her. With a shear in his hand, Jae Young proceeds to his next plan of hurting Yong Ju in revenge for what he did to Sung Woo. He uses the shears to stab Yong Ju multiple times. Yong Ju becomes mad and beats the shit out of him. Even when the police come, he doesn't stop while his friend runs away. This becomes a good opportunity for Yang Hun to run away too. However, Jae Young decides to follow him, for he is not done with his plan. When he corners Yang Hun, Jae Young points the blade to Yang Hun's throat. But he chickens out and points it to his own throat instead. He slit the side of his neck, which makes Yang Hun scared, then runs away. Jae Young wants to kill himself, but an image of Yeri appears in front of him, making him stop. Unfortunately, Yong Ju's friend shows up and knocks him off with a hard rock. Blood flows from his head, but the police officer arrives in time to save him. The movie ends with Jae Young's dream of him and Yeri lying in a meadow, happy together. When he wakes up, he is on a hospital bed, alive and ready to face not only the world but the ones who made his life miserable, the wretches. Fear is temporary, but regret is forever. Therefore, I encourage you to face your fear and be determined to rise above it. Talk about it because if you learn about your fear and gain a better understanding of it, you will never have to regret that you allowed it to fester and take control of your life. What do you think about the movie? What will you do if you are in Jay Young's shoes? Let us know what you think in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching, and as always, see you next time.